Today in Ineffable Attributes, we will be going through God's holiness. So 1 Samuel 2.2 says, There is none holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you. There is no rock like our God. God alone stands as the holy, pure, perfect one. Now we know that when we believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior and we repent of our sins, we then are found righteous before the Father based upon what Christ has done. Now, we need to know that as we continue our pursuit of holiness, we ourselves cannot be holy without the Holy Spirit living within us. And so when God calls us to be holy, just as he is holy, he is commanding us to pursue that which is of him, but that which cannot be obtained by mere man, nor can we fully be the emblem of the holiness that God is, because we know that God dwells in unapproachable light. And so the holiness of God is ramped up to an infinitely higher degree than the holiness which we will receive. Even once we're in heaven, once we're holy vessels, we're purified, we'll never be tempted or fall into sin ever again, our holiness is still not exactly the same as God's because, again, God is in a dimension uh, that is entirely known to him. There is nothing that can fully equal up to God's holiness. We will be um, truly holy in the sense of what God is calling us to be, and we will be truly holy. But the matter of the fact is, is that our holiness will never be to the infinite degree to where God uh, dwells in unapproachable light and, and the holiness where when he revealed himself to Moses, that Moses, um, God had to cover Moses from the full sight of God's glory and splendor and holiness. Otherwise, Moses uh, would die. Any of us who would enter into the fullness of God's holiness would just entirely evaporate. We would be annihilated and obliterated within a second because only God is that which he is to the full degree that he is. And so God's holiness is just uh, magnificent and marvelous. He is worthy of worship. It is him alone who we should worship and dedicate our lives to and pursue after in fullness because he is the giver of life. He's the sustainer of all. His holiness is completely perfected and purified. And we know that the more we pursue after God's holiness, in the power of his Holy Spirit, the more holy we will become and the more we will understand that holiness truly is the way. The way is not in the way of what the world says. The way is not the way of what we think it is. The way in which we are to live our lives is not the way in which we want our fleshly carnality to bring God down to our level and then worship a false God that is created in our mind rather than the God of the Word who is the Holy One of Israel. So we need to know that God is deserving of worship. He truly is holy and his holiness is on a level that is far beyond anything we will ever fully comprehend and fully obtain. And this uh, makes me want to end with the quote, uh, one of the five quotes that is in this book that I always end with after each chapter. It's by A.W. Tozier. And it says, we know nothing like the divine holiness. It stands apart, unique, unapproachable, incomprehensible, and unattainable. The natural man is blind to it. We may fear God's power and admire his wisdom, but his holiness we cannot even imagine. So it's just a miraculous truth to know that God's holiness stands far apart anything we can ever fully comprehend and understand. And he is deserving of worship. And we need to continue to pursue to pursue uh, the walk of us wanting to be holy just as God commands us to be holy just as he is holy.